Welcome. In this video, we shall determine whether some well-known sets are countable or not. Example one: the set of integers is countable. We recall from the definition that a set A is said to be countable if there exists an infinite sequence in which every element of A appears. We have found that. If we take the sequence to be this one, we should take x n to be n over two if n is even, and negative n minus one over two if n is odd. Then every element of the set of integers appears with no repetition and no omission. Therefore, z is countable. In the previous video. We also give the reason by using the union of the set of natural numbers, the set of negative integers, and the set with zero to show that the set of integer is countable. Example two: the set A of all even integers is countable. First, we know from example one that the set of integers is countable. Therefore, it has a bijection. With the set of natural numbers, by definition, a set A is countable if there exists a bijective function that maps the set A to n. Therefore, the set A is also countable if there exists a bijective function that maps A to z, the set of integers. Now we found a function f that maps A to z. Defined by f n equals to n over two, we can check that this function is both injective and surjective. Thus, there is a bijective function that maps a to z. Hence, a is countable. Another reason is that since the set of integers is countable, and the set of all even integers is a subset of z, therefore. The set of even integers is also countable. Example three: the set n cross n of all possible pairs of natural numbers is countable. We can recall that if the sets a and b are countable, then their Cartesian product a cross b, which is the set that contains all other pairs of the form a b, where a is an element from Set A and B is an element from Set B is also a countable set. Here we can illustrate once again by listing all the elements from the set n cross n in this table, where the i-th row contains elements with the first coordinate to be i, and the j-th column contains elements with the second coordinate to be j. We want to show that there is a bijective function that maps the elements from this set to the elements in the set of natural numbers, or in other words, we want to show that there is an infinite sequence such that every element in this set appears. Now we can use the diagonal counting scheme. We first count the elements that appears in the top left-hand corner. Then we consider the second diagonal by counting the elements two one and one two. Next, we consider the third diagonal by counting elements three one two two and one three, and so on. In this way, we manage to count all elements once with no omission. We have assigned each element to an infinite sequence, and the order that we count them is also the order that these elements appears in the sequence. Thus, the set n cross n is countable. By the similar argument, we can also show that z cross z is countable. That is, the set that contains all points in the Cartesian plane. With integer values for their x and y coordinates is a countable set. Example four: the set of rational numbers is countable. First, 
we want to show that the set of all positive rational numbers is countable. Let me denote it by A. We can think of elements of these sets as numbers which can be represented in the form m over n, where m and n are natural numbers. Let's list all numbers of this form systematically into the following table, which is infinite in both directions. At every point in the table, we take the row number divided by the column number to give the value of m over n. Thus, every element of the form m over n, where m n is natural number, will be in this table. Then we shall hit every number by the diagonal counting scheme. For example, the first number we hit is 1 over 1. The second number we hit is 2 over 1. And the third one is 1 over 2. The fourth one is 3 over 1. We can omit 2 over 2 because it has the same value as 1 over 1. And we proceed the fifth, the sixth, and so on. Then we manage to hit every number and assign numbers with a natural number which represent the order of the term it appears in an infinite sequence. Therefore, the set of positive rational numbers is countable. We can also argue that the set of positive rational numbers is countable because there is a bijective function that maps this set to n cross n. Next, we consider the set of all negative rational numbers. This set is also countable because there is a bijective function that maps the set of positive rational numbers to the set of negative rational numbers. Finally, the set of rational numbers Q is countable because it is a union of the sets A, B, and the set that contains the only element 0. Besides, we can also think of elements of this set as numbers which can be represented in the form m over n, where m is an integer and n is a natural number. And let us list all numbers of this form systematically in the following table, which is infinite in both directions. At every point in the table, we take the row number divided by the column number to give the value of m over n. Thus, every element of the form m over n, where m is an integer and n is a natural number, will appear in this table. Then, we shall hit each number by the diagonal counting scheme. For example, the first one we hit is 0 over 1. The second one is 1 over 1. The third one is 0 over 2, but we can omit it. And then the third one is here, negative 1 over 1, and so on. Then we manage to hit each number and assign numbers with a natural number, which represent the order of the term it appears in an infinite sequence. Therefore, the set of rational numbers is countable. Before we show that the set of real numbers is uncountable, let us have some discussion on irrational numbers. There are some well-known irrational numbers such as square root 2, pi, and the Euler's number e. We can represent them in decimal expansion. They have infinite decimal expansion and there is no repetition of patterns in the expansion. In the open interval 0, 1, there are also irrational numbers, to name a few below. Between two irrational numbers, we can always insert another irrational number with value in between them. We want to show that the open interval 0, 1 is uncountable. The following is the proof that the open interval 0, 1 is uncountable and also the set of real numbers r is uncountable. We shall prove by contradiction. Suppose that 
this open interval is countably infinite. By definition, there is a bijective function from the open interval to n, or in other words, from n to the open interval. Thus, we can list the elements in the table as shown in the left, and each is the output of the function with a particular natural number as input. Now we want to show that there is an element in the open interval which doesn't belong to this list. And that means there is element in the open interval which is not the output of the function f. And that means that the function f is not subjective. The element is x, whose decimal representation is 0 upon b1, b2, b3, b4, and so on, where bn is taken to be 2 if ann is 1, and bn is taken to be 1 if ann is not equal to 1, where these ann are those digits which forms the diagonal when we are listing all these numbers in this table. Then we see that this x has a value between 0 and 1, but this x is none of the decimal number in the list. Because if you compare the value of x with any decimal numbers in this list, there is always at least one digit difference between the bn and any numbers in this list. Thus, this x is not an output of the function f, so f cannot be subjective, which contradicts our assumption that f is bijective. Therefore, the open interval 0, 1 is uncountable. Since this open interval is a subset of the set of real numbers, therefore the set of real numbers r is also uncountable. From this example, we notice that the set of irrational numbers are uncountable, meaning that there are a lot more irrational numbers than rational numbers.